So the question is whether evaporation is endothermic or exothermic. Is it an endothermic or exothermic process? So imagine this is the sample of water right up here. This is the surface of our water here. These water molecules, they're actually moving around. They're moving both kinetic, they have kinetic energy, so they're moving like this, and they're probably rotating, maybe vibrating along this bond here. So there's energy here. And sometimes one of the water molecules has enough energy to leave the surface and go into the air, become water vapor. That's evaporation. So when we look at it in terms of endothermic, exothermic, here comes some heat. And as this heat radiates down, they gain energy. So they're absorbing energy. They start moving faster, spinning, rotating faster. So we say since they absorb energy, evaporation, that's going to be endothermic. It absorbs heat from the surroundings, the air and the sun here. And as we think about the water molecules, we have intermolecular forces. There's hydrogen bonding here between our water molecules, weak hydrogen bonds here between the water molecules, and they're constantly forming and breaking, but they're holding it together. So we need to overcome those intermolecular forces for evaporation to take place. So the sun, it radiates some energy or any heat source, and then the water molecules, they gain absorb enough energy to leave the surface and evaporate. That's it. This is Dr. B and thanks for watching.